And a sad update this morning. Miami-Dade police now say six people lost their lives. CBS 4's Riel Creighton is live in West Miami-Dade with the latest. Riel. Well, Lauren and Bianca, yes, the death toll is now six. It has risen from four to six, and Miami-Dade police stressing that there could still be more. Right now, they are involved in a painstaking effort to try to get to what may be additional victims as the investigation into what went wrong starts now. Panic from an eyewitness who records a graphic scene moments after a newly constructed bridge comes crashing down. 950 tons of concrete and steel that killed six people and injured at least nine others. The uh, whole bridge is down across the whole side of 8th Street. Uh, I'll have to update you of any further information uh, for possible entrapment. The bridge that connected FIU's campus in the city of Sweetwater crushed cars on top of eight lanes of traffic just before 2 p.m. Dispatchers heard calling out for a 45, the code for a victim dead on scene. In the midst of the chaos, first responders jumping into action. I was actually sitting in traffic on my way in and uh, witnessed the collapse. And Sergeant Jenna Mendez with Sweetwater Police was one of the first on the scene. And I jumped out of my vehicle and I uh, actually ran and jumped on top of the bridge where we had four injured construction workers. We had one not breathing, uh, one that was unconscious with a major laceration to his head and two that were just in a state of shock. Countless people who heard the crash tried helping the injured. Jose Mejia says his rescue efforts failed as he tried to get to a man pinned under a car. Went towards him thinking I could help him, but I couldn't see his whole body. It was stuck under the bridge. And then his hand just went down. And I was very, very traumatic. And I think, I think a lot of people aren't going to forget this. At least I won't. Joseph Gonzalez got lucky. He was driving under the bridge with his mother just minutes before. As soon as I opened the door to get out, I heard a, like an explosion. I didn't know what it was. I told my mom, mom, something happened. Now counting his blessings. At the same time, I feel hurt because that's, that's family. I have two kids, and that, that would have been us. This woman who works nearby says she was held back by police after she tried helping a boy who was in the back seat of one of those cars. Just knocking on the window full of blood, asking me for help, and it's... It's insane because, I mean, you have this person asking you for help and the police officers are telling you, you can't, you can't, you can go under the bridge to help him. She says she later learned from officers that boy did not make it out alive. No, and they were telling me we couldn't get him out, that we couldn't get him out, he, he, he passed. And it's a face that there is no way that I could in a million years forget his face, full of blood asking me for help. Well, sadly, we also now know from Miami-Dade police that this is now certainly no longer a search for survivors, but this is going to be a very painstaking and slow process, they say, for the rescue crews and the recovery crews because they're concerned about their own safety because that bridge, again, is still extremely unstable. Meantime, Senator Marco Rubio tweeted out yesterday that the cables for the bridge had loosened and that they were in the process of being tightened when the bridge collapsed. We're live in Sweetwater, Riel Creighton, CBS4 This Morning.